good morning, Leah. Good morning, Allison. How are you? I'm doing great. I am so happy to see you. I know. I've missed this. I it's know. Like we work together and we talk on the phone frequently, but yeah. it's been forever since I've seen you. I know. We do not see each other nearly enough, rarely at all, um, especially because we don't have in-person meetings anymore. So yeah. it's not the same when we're just a box on the screen. I mean, we can chat it up before and after the meeting and possibly inappropriately during the meeting when we're in person, but you can't do that on Zoom. Like you can't. There's a level of rudeness you just can't. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I accidentally send that message to everyone <laughs> instead of just the person you intend to send it to. It's different to sit in the back row and do a little bit of this, you know, uh, but there's no back row at a Zoom meeting, so. Nope, we're all front and center. Right. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna apologize before we even get started. I have two new puppies and, um, they're distracting. So if I'm looking away, it's because I'm trying to figure out what they're into now. Um, and although I say puppies and they are just six months old, they're very, very large. They're Aussie doodles. So um, Aussie doodles, huh? Yes. Australian shepherd poodle mixes. And um, yes. And That's very exciting. Like dog fight, they're, they're not fighting. They wrestle constantly. So just ignore wow. them. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds that doesn't sound like anything to apologize for as long as they're cute. They're adorable. <laughs> so they will just we'll excuse cute. a lot of things in the name of cuteness. <laughs> yes. They're so bad and they know it, but then they will just turn and look at you with these eyes and you just you melt. You melt. Aww. How long have you had them? Remind me. Hi Carrie. Um I got them in December. Um December fourth, I think was the date. So Okay. Nice. I cannot believe how much they've grown since then. It's crazy. Yeah. Well, hopefully they will make a spirited appearance for us today. <laughs> I They're really, really similar. Our our colors here. Right? Yeah. yeah we must like, have been feeling it. We're wearing a uniform or the same outfit or something. Well, welcome everybody who's here with us today. Please say hello in the comments so we can say hello back to you or accidentally miss it, not say hello at all, but don't take it personally. <laughs> um, so what's going on? What are you reading now? Um, I I'm, I did not I did not plan well. Mm. I'm still trying to catch up with the Diana Gabaldon book so that I can read Go Tell the Bees That I'm Gone. Mm -hmm. um, I have made it through book five. I finished book five and I needed to take a break. So I'm just like, so I've been reading silly romances Perfect. three in the last week because I'm at that point where it's just like, I need fluff. I need yeah. fluff because yeah. her books are so dense. And yeah. it's not hard reads. It's just, there's so, there's so, there's so much that happens in one of yeah. books that, you know, I just, and I pay attention because I love those characters. Mm -hmm. but I just I need I needed a break. Yeah. He ends the back, yeah. so it's gonna be great. And um, I missed him and Rollo this last book, but yeah. So, do you have any fluffy romances to recommend from your recent reads? Um, from my recent reads, no. They, I wasn't like overly thrilled with any of them. They, they just are what they are. They fill their purpose. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I've had some audio book. I've, I, for some reason, I've just kind of had trouble. I keep not finishing different audio books that I've started. Mm -hmm. And uh, the most recent one that I did not finish was The Likeness by Tana French. And I love her you know I've read a lot of stuff by her but I think I like her standalones better than the Dublin Murder Club and something about the story and the likeness I just could not get they into. They were very unlikable characters all, yeah. all of them. Well and like the idea not spoiling anything for anybody is that this um detective gets pulled into this case because the woman who has been killed um Primarily, it's because she has, the woman who's been killed is using a fake identity, and it's the fake identity that detective used when she was undercover years ago. So that part was interesting, but for some reason to me, like, the woman who was killed also, like, looked exactly like this woman. And I just, that seemed like a stretch to me in a story, and her stuff normally isn't a stretch. Her stuff is normally pretty, like, yeah. 
realistic. Yeah, everyone's got a doppelganger out there, but how likely is it that they live in the next town over? And you're investigating their murder. I, yeah, I don't know. For some reason that felt, and then you're right. There wasn't a lot of like likability there. I didn't get pulled in, you know, be feeling yeah. sympathetic towards somebody. I thought, yeah. you know, all of the characters in that book, you know, not the detective herself, mm -hmm. but all of the other characters were a little bit despicable. Like they were just spoiled brats and they only cared about themselves. And they, yeah, that's probably my least favorite of her books. Okay. So it sounds like if I moved on to the next one in the series without finishing this one, it would probably be okay. Yeah. Yeah. The next uh one's good. Okay, Mary. Mary's saying she's always been curious about those books. I really, really liked The Witch Elm. I really, really liked that book. I really did too. If you're yeah, start, I'd start there. But yeah, um, but yeah, so I if think you read one. I don't know. Yeah, you can totally skip that one and move on to the next one. Okay, Each maybe I'll like do a that. Standalone story. Yes. You just get introduced to the new detective yeah. at some point during yeah. the book. So. Yeah, and her, I really like her listening to her things on audio because they always have the narrator with the appropriate accent, everything. That they're really kind of, they, they're very immersive. I feel like it's happening around me. So I would like to keep going with it. I just, for some reason, couldn't make it with this one. So that's encouraging. Yeah. yeah. Um, the next one is Frank Mackey, his story. Okay. Like until now, Frank has kind of been like this gruff character she yeah. inside of him so that's interesting I, I really like the next one i think i would like that too yeah yeah well that's good thank you for that encouragement what else i had also um i'm reading in print uh the secret history by donna tart because i read the goldfinch in novel conversation uh several years ago and it became one of my very favorite books i loved the goldfinch so i've been kind of i immediately purchased the secret history but then i've been putting off reading it because then I don't, then I've read it and then I don't have anything else really. <laughs> so um, I've just been excited to read it again or, you know, looking forward to reading it. So I'm reading that now. I'm over halfway through and uh, I am really enjoying it. I really like her writing style. Everything is just, again, it feels very immersive to me. There's a lot of words, but I like a lot of words. They all sort of just cast a spell around me. So I do recommend that. And apparently there's a podcast called Once Upon a Time in Bennington. And I did not look any of this up before this call. It is just reminding me. Um, and it's about Donna Tart and two other authors whose names I forget, two other known authors um, who were all at this school together. And sort of, I think some of the drama behind in their real lives and that might, I don't know, have to do with this book. I don't know. I'm excited to listen to that though too once I'm done. So I would appreciate no one spoiling that for me immediately. <laughs> right now. I, did, I did forget um, in my Diana Gabaldon break, I did read A Flicker in the Dark by mm. Stacey Willingham. Yeah. It's, it's very interesting. Um, there's a woman who um, when she was a kid, six girls in her town were disappeared, never found them. <clears throat> and it, it like became this whole big thing. And her father was arrested for their murders. Um, he pled guilty and like it just, mm -hmm. so that kind of shaped the rest of her life. And she's recently engaged. And again, girls start going missing. And she kind of has a tangential connection to a couple of them. Okay. So, like, it just is bringing all this stuff up. Yeah. And, um, as the story goes, like, she's convinced different different people, different people, different people. So, like, the ending yeah. is kind of, I think I figured it out partway through, but I didn't know how we were going to get there. Because, like, yeah. so there were lots of twists and turns that I didn't see coming. Mm -hmm. But, um, like, I figured out the who. Yeah, like, I've, seen, I've seen that book cover around. I think it might be on Hoopla. Um, maybe I checked it out on Overdrive. So okay, gotcha. I've seen that. I've seen that, I've seen that cover movie. around, and uh, yeah, that's good to know. I've been I've been wanting to like I've been kind of in a thrillery or psychological suspense type of mood, and I've read a few things. I've also not finished a few things. Um, but I did read The Silent Patient, which I know is okay. like a, from a while ago. A lot of people have, you know, talked about it when it came out. Um, and I really enjoyed it. I, when I went to like log in on Goodreads or whatever, I saw a lot of people not liking it for a variety of reasons, but I enjoyed it. And even though kind of like you're describing, like when I was 
I listened to it while I was listening to it. Like I had ideas and I saw connections, but I still, but I, it happened in exactly the right way where I still didn't guess it, but I was like, I was hooked. I was along. I was like, I think yeah. I might have, but then it still caught me by surprise. And uh, I really enjoyed it. Of course you, sometimes you get on there and people are like, this was so obvious. I saw it all along. <laughs> like when we got almost to the end, I'm like, wait a minute. What? Like that, that's not how I thought this was going to go. Yeah. Was that I didn't anticipate at all. Yeah. 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 And, and sometimes it's, I think it's even okay if sometimes you figure it out, if it's just, if the build is good and then you're just satisfied by what happens, you don't want to leave people, you want to give them a twist, but you also don't want to leave them unsatisfied. Like, well, I never saw that coming in a bad way. That doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Um, and so finding that balance, I think is good. And that's how I felt with the silent patient. And he had a new one this past year called the maidens, um, which I have not read, but Anyway, so I did enjoy that. I did not finish a few other thrillery type things, but it's it just it just gotta like draw you in and you have to feel compelled to know what happens to these particular people too, yes. I think. Yeah. 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 So it looks like um there are some really good thrillers coming. All right, tell tell me. Tell me um, them. I'm looking forward to um Greenwich Park by Catherine Faulkner. Okay. Um, it says it's a twisty, sharp-witted uh, debut thriller, as electrifying as Girl on the Train about impending motherhood, unreliable friendships, and the high price of keeping secrets. So, like, woman, she and her husband are living like this ideal, idyllic life, and then, um, so like, in her prenatal class, there's this other woman who comes in as single mom, like, completely, completely different. But some, for some reason, she's drawn to her. And um, she starts acting weird and mm -hmm. things just escalate. And um, I guess there's some past crime in her life. I don't know. But it's just like yes. one of those be careful who you befriend kind of stories. Right. I do like those types of stories. Um, mm -hmm. And today, so today we're going to be talking about books that have not yet come out, books that are going to be coming out. Right. Well, I think we're talking about a mix because okay. I, I will admit that a couple on my list, like this one, came out mm -hmm. March 25th. So it came out last week. Uh, a couple of my books did just come did out. You say March? I did say March. I meant January. I'm looking at the date. Okay. It's like but I said yes. March. I don't know. But so, yeah. That's fine. <laughs> yeah, a couple of mine came out in January as well. Um, but for the most part, these are books that you would anticipate needing to place a hold on. Um, whether they haven't come out yet or they've just come out, but they still have holds. In my uh, mystery, thriller, psychological suspense um, realm, a book that came out just this past week, too, was called The Appeal by Janice Hallett. Um, and it is about a, I guess there's a local theater group, um, a dead body is found, an arrest is made, but the like premise of the book is that in the run up to the trial, two young lawyers sift through material, email messages, letters with a growing suspicion that a killer may be hiding in plain sight. The evidence is all there between the lines waiting to be uncovered. And so the whole setup of the book, there is no narration. It is just one of those sort of like modern epistolary novels where it's texts, it's emails, it's whatever. I love those. Yeah. I and so I love those. Yeah. I don't know what it is. I think I read a really good one when I was, you know, um, probably that YA age mm -hmm. and for ever since I have just I've absolutely loved them so yeah like, when there are stories where like most of it takes place like in emails or mm -hmm. what I, I think that's just so clever yeah, it's love. really fun and in this case you are trying to read between the lines to figure out you know to solve this to kind of like the way that the lo the lawyers yeah the lawyers would be doing mm -hmm. um and so I saw some mixed things when I went to add this to want to read on goodreads mm -hmm. Um, I also saw some mixed things about people who'd already read it. And the, so it seemed like it would be polarizing, but polarizing because either you like this type of thing or you don't like this type of thing. Yeah. Um, and we really like this type of thing. So I imagine that I would like it quite a bit. So I have it on hold. I'm excited for it to come in. And uh, I already am wholeheartedly recommending it despite knowing <laughs> Um, There is a book that comes out tomorrow that mm -hmm. I'm super excited to read. Um, last year, when we did this last year, I talked mm -hmm. about um, Finley Donovan is killing it. Mm -hmm. um, this is the follow-up. 
Finley Donovan, mm. Donovan knocks them dead. So it's book number okay. two of the series um, by L. Cosimano. Cos Cosima, I don't know, but it comes out tomorrow. And um, in the first book, like this, she's a writer who somehow mistakenly gets um, confused for a murder for a uh, killer for hire. <laughs> And in attempting to like, you know, take remedy that situation, she gets caught up in the investigation. Well, since people now think that she's a mm -hmm. liar, she gets hired to kill someone else. And then someone else is her ex-husband. Oh. Um, yes, on one hand, she would really like to see him dead because Sure, <laughs> you know. And, but he's also, you know, the father of our children. So <laughs> right. she's that. and kind of she's also get she has a partner in crime now, like someone from her life kind of like figured out something was going on in the first yeah. place. So now they're they're partners. And it's just I can't wait to see where this goes. And these books are hysterical. Like, That's you know, awesome. Like, I just laughed and laughed as I was listening to it. It's totally unrealistic. Like, I, I can't imagine being mistaken for a killer for hire. But right. But once you can make that leap of faith in reading the book, once you get over that, then you can just enjoy. <laughs> right. Exactly. So I'm looking forward to that. That's yeah. awesome. It reminds me of this. I'm assuming it's going to be a series um, that is coming out on February 22nd called The Verifiers. Mm -hmm. And the author is Jane Peck. It says, introducing Claudia Lynn, a sharp-witted amateur sleuth for the 21st century. This debut novel follows Claudia as she verifies people's online lives and lies for a dating detective agency in New York City until a client with an unusual request goes missing. So she works for this online dating detective agency and she's a lifelong mystery reader who wrote her senior thesis on Jane Austen. So she believes she's landed her ideal job. But when a client vanishes, Claudia breaks protocol to investigate and uncovers a maelstrom of personal and corporate deceit, part literary mystery, part family story. It's a clever and incisive examination, blah, blah, blah. Fill in the rest. But that's the, that I, I don't know if it'll be a series or not, but I felt like that's the kind of thing that could easily become one. Yes. Like, a sleuth, yes, I, I like that. A sleuth for a detective agency. I mean, for I yeah, I know. Like, and I like that merging. Of, of those people are fake, but so right. right. Yeah. I like the merging of her her love of mysteries and her love of Jane Austen. So this is perfect. Right. <laughs> Leah, I have your mug out as well today. Uh, this was my morning coffee mug. Yes. But then I transitioned to the chai tea latte appropriate for our show, which I actually wanted to point out. I have been to Trader Joe's now again, and I bought the original Trader Joe's chai tea latte mix that I was having when we very first started this. And um, it's very good. I but and I remembered like the Trader Joe's being so much better than the one I got at Kroger. But when I read the package on the Trader Joe's one, I realized that it calls for two whole scoops of mix. And maybe that's why it was better. It's been so long now, I don't remember, but this this packs a punch that the Kroger one didn't. And I think it's because I was using like, I'm now I'm using like double a lot of sugar. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, Carrie says that um, one of her notable recent reads was Dreaming of You by Melissa Lozado Olivia. It's a trippy at times grotesque novel in verse where the narrator mm. um, resurrects the late singer Selena. That's interesting. Ooh. Yes. And apparently Fairfield County District Library came up with the same adjective I did. Interesting. Right. <laughs> um, yeah, novels and verse can be really, uh, like, I don't know, they're just, they're, like, they're, it's like a great bridge between reading a novel and reading something else, not even necessarily poetry, just yeah. it's a different way of, like, conceptualizing the story, kind of like, a graphic novel or something else it's almost like the way a graphic novel has you use pictures a novel in verse has you use words like differently or something that's cool i i will admit i've never actually read a novel in verse mm -hmm. um, 
I'm going to have to try one at some point. Yeah, because well, I'm they're very quick through. to get through because the words take up like this much space on the page. <laughs> right. <laughs> they go fast. Yeah. Okay. So what's your next book? Um, on March 1st, and I really do mean March this time, yeah. um, <laughs> The Love of My Life by Rosie Walsh is coming out. Um, there's this woman, Emma, she and her husband, they have a daughter, and like everything <laughs> that they know about her is a lie. So, and she, <laughs> she might have gotten away with it, but she gets very sick. So her husband starts doing some family research for mm -hmm. her. I, I don't sure know exactly what he's looking for, but he starts doing yeah. research and discovers that she doesn't really exist. So, um, yeah, you, I, I love a, a story where you think you know a character and yeah, so yeah, that's cool. Um, Let's see, I have, this one comes out May 10th, so several months away, but it's The Hacienda by Isabel Cañas. Um, they describe it as Mexican Gothic meets Rebecca, so check um, for me. In this debut supernatural suspense novel, set in the aftermath of the Mexican War of Independence about a remote house, a sinister haunting, and the woman pulled into their clutches. I do think it is very much inspired by Rebecca because um, the main character, Beatriz, Beatrice, Beatriz, uh, she, her father was executed and her home destroyed. And so when this handsome older man proposes to her, she ignores rumors surrounding his first wife's sudden demise and decides to just seize that opportunity, but for reasons that I think have to do with having nothing. So, um, never ex ignore stories about I know. Like sudden demise. <laughs> that was your first mistake. Yes. Sudden demise. If people use the phrase sudden demise, um, <laughs> You don't ignore that. Design. That but the house is good. not the house is not what she had hoped it would be. And so it sounds like it's creepy and like like the description said, somewhat supernatural in its suspense. But the cover is, you know, a you know, the creepy house in the background and like the woman looking off into the distance. And so I'll read it. <laughs> One I'm looking forward to is uh, Insomnia by Sarah Pinborough. It comes out April twelfth. Um and even like the way the description's written, it looks really cool. It's like mm. in the darkness, madness lies. Um, Emma can't sleep. Like this woman, she's about to turn 40 and she suddenly cannot sleep. When her mother turned 40, uh oh, she was a bit mad. And, um, <laughs> you know, so she's afraid that that is happening to her. Is she going mad like her mother did? Is it something? to do with turning 40, but suddenly she can't sleep. And she's like, you, so you're just kind of like on pins and needles seeing what yeah. happens. Um, it looks like it's gonna be kind of interesting. And you get more and more like loopy and unreliable, the less sleep exactly. you get. Yes. So, yes. yikes. Well, that reminds me of this one that comes out March 1st um, that I actually have, I read an advanced ebook version of, it's called Sundial by Catriona Ward. And I read, the Last House on Needless Street last fall by Catriona Ward, and I loved it. I really, really liked it. It's a psychological suspense. It was super strange, but it was very worth it. Really liked it. So I read Sundial. I requested a copy of that and read it, um, and it reminded me of what you're talking about because um, the main character is a woman named Rob, and she had a very strange upbringing, mm -hmm. and now she kind of has a strange life as an adult, and her daughter is for the only word is also strange. That's the best word I can use. And so the question kind of is like this strangeness, is it something inherited from Rob? And so the story takes place in the past during Rob's childhood and then in the present where she feels like she needs to handle what is about what is happening with her daughter. And, um, but of course it's certainly becomes more complicated than that. And the, the thing I liked about this book and her other book is that while it is in many senses, a traditional, psychological suspense kind of, and this one's kind of like a domestic suspense sort of thing. Um, it, she dives deep enough into things that there's never just like, oh, well, this is the bad guy. Like we all have some everything that has happened to us. So 
what, you know, it's not just like, oh, well, he's a psychopath and that's that, you know, there's things that have happened to everyone that lead them into being the person that they are and no one is all good or all bad. And, and so she kind of carries that through while still keeping you on the edge of your seat. Like what happened here? What happened here? Yeah. So sorry about all of that. I just discovered that my dog has been chewing up my shoe while we were on air, like the shoe that I wore to work today. Right. I was going to say, so you'll be changing shoes before you go back in this afternoon. <sighs> yeah. 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 Oh no. Yeah. Wow. I love shoes. <sighs> well, so do you. And you I know, I wear shoes. <laughs> required to wear them. Yes. <laughs> But one if they love you so much, then they should get a job to pay for them. Right? <laughs> Speaking of jobs, we work at the library. Um, <laughs> there's, a, there's a book I'm looking forward to. It's The Woman in the Library um, by Sulari Gentile, I guess. Um, it's coming out June 7th. In the Boston Public Library, suddenly a woman screams. Um, shoes are the best chew toys. No, no, they are not. I, sorry. <laughs> I also had the woman in the library written down. So I'm glad that you brought that one up. Oh. Um, sorry, I didn't mean to steal one of your books. Oh, no, don't. That's fine. Because I don't have enough. I don't have enough. That's for sure. <laughs> no, no, no. I did not send you 14 type pages of titles. So, yeah. So there's a screen and the Guards like nobody move. So it ends up that they're left with these four people in the library um, who are sitting at, at a table talking, telling their story, and one of them is the killer. And um, I'm excited to figure out how we get to figuring out who the murderer is. Um, yes. That's kind of what I thought too. I liked, yeah, it says, while well, they wait for the all clear, four strangers pass the time in conversation. Each has their own reasons for being in the reading room that morning. It just so happens one of them is a murderer. So it's, yeah, how, like, knowing that going in, I just feel like there's got to be, mm -hmm. make a whole book out of that. You have to be really good at right. yeah. healing things and laying the red herrings and stuff. Because it's one thing when, like, that's just a very simple plot. So you got to be right. exactly. good at doing it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going to take a different turn. This is a book that came out this month that I have also read. I probably mentioned it when, maybe when I read it, but I just wanted to draw everyone's attention to it again. It's called How High We Go in the Dark. The author is Sequoia Nagamatsu. And I would call this kind of a little science fiction-y, speculative fiction-y, but it's very much real world based. It's not super out there. Um, beginning in 2030, a pandemic, uh, kind of passes over the world and it's a different, they call it the Arctic plague. It's different than the pandemic we've experienced. If you get this Arctic plague, there's no returning from it. You do eventually die. Um, there are a lot of uh, sick children uh, in this particular circumstance. And so the, but the way that the book is written is that it's every section is from a different person's perspective and it kind of just moves over the years, including up through the pandemic, up after long after the pandemic is over, but just kind of showing the the impact that the pandemic had on the way that life was lived and the way that it shaped the future going forward. Um, it was really, I just, I really, really liked it. And the perspectives, some of the people link very loosely. Mm -hmm. um, they have met in different times, but it's not one of those where you're like, oh, this is how it's all connected. So don't go into yeah. it expecting that because then you'll be disappointed. But um, it's just different people's perspectives. The audio is um, each one's narrated by a different person. Um, a lot of the um, characters are Asian and they do have Asian narrators. So that's kind of cool. Um, and different people, like I said, narrate each section. So I really enjoyed it and I found it very moving. Um, so I hope that someone else hears this and decides to pick it up who wouldn't have otherwise. Also the cover is very pretty. Okay. That one sounds really interesting. And I probably yeah. would have avoided it without hearing your recommendation because- Yeah, it's kind of intense, honestly, yeah. but I feel like it's worth it. And the intense parts then are, they're also less intense parts. And it just gave me like lots of ways to think about the ways that, again, something that in this circumstance shapes the world a, 
a, like very differently than our pandemic, but just thinking about yeah. how those things, I don't know, carry through. Like one thing that kind of reminds me of some of the books that you've read, one of the instances is they make these little dolls that can record someone's voice. And so that's a way that a lot of people, they purchase these dolls and then they, they record stories and things like that to then give to their children once they've been, you know, they know that they have this plague and everything. And it reminded me a little bit of some of the AI types of yeah. books that you've read. And, but that's just one story. So there's a lot yeah. of different ones. In there. Um, one of the books that I've got on my list that comes out it came out this month. It came out the 18th. Um, the Good Son by Jacqueline Mitchard. Um, I like her books. And I think oh, I think I mistyped her name when I wrote it on the list. I'm so sorry. Um, I think there's a T in there that I left out. Um, <laughs> it's about like how how do you when the you how do you what when you've got this person who you love and they become someone that you don't recognize. Like, how, how do you continue to love them? Um, this woman, like her son in a drug fueled haze kills his girlfriend. His girlfriend was also the daughter of the woman's best friend. So now she's like, she's lost her best friend, mm -hmm. she's lost her son who goes to prison. Um, and when he gets released, um, and it sounds like he doesn't serve nearly as much time as one would think. <laughs> uh -huh which is part of the problem, which is, so it's also like looking at like privilege and, um, you know, and he's like broken prison was horrible for him. Mm -hmm. So like helping him when, how, how, how can you forgive that? And it just, so it looks like it's going to be an intense read, but, um, yeah. 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 Um, Mary commented that the, Book I mentioned, How High We Go in the Dark, um, sounded similar to Station Eleven. Station Eleven is one of my very favorite books. I do not plan on watching the show <laughs> um, because it was a really great reading experience. Um, but it has been compared to that. I think the reading experience was different. Um, Station Eleven is more, it's just, it's a linear story for more than How High We Go in the Dark is all those different perspectives. And Station Eleven does go back to see about like when the pandemic hit and stuff, but it's it's more more linear. Um, but since you mentioned that, uh, Emily St. John Mandel, who's the author of Station Eleven, uh, one of my very favorite books, she has a new book coming out this year in April, April 5th. It's called Sea of Tranquility. And I copy and pasted the description without reading it because I just don't even, I'm just so excited to read it. I don't even care what it's about, but I will read the first section to you, which says, um, it takes the reader from Vancouver Island in 1912 to a dark colony on the moon 500 years later, unfurling the story of humanity across centuries in space, which is all I need to know. I know I'm all in. I'm very excited. And if you want to know the specifics, you can read that description further <laughs> in the link that we attached. <laughs> um, Carrie says that she's checked out Station Eleven twice, but hasn't read it yet. I will tell you, I've also checked out that book <laughs> at least twice and haven't read it yet. Man, it is so good, but I have not read it since experiencing a pandemic of our own, but I read it actually when it first came out, not to be hipster about it, like I liked it before everyone else, but um, it was just, I was working at a library, it came out and I was like, hmm, this sounds interesting. And uh, same, same way I read everything else I read now, um, it comes across my desk, I'm like, why not? And it was just, it really like caught me by surprise, I guess, it was really good. Um, one that's coming out um, March 1st that I'm intrigued by is One Italian Summer by mm -hmm. Rebecca Searle. Um, did I steal another one of yours again? Oh, no, go ahead. I have so many. <laughs> I was just Allison, and I, Allison typed up her list first, so she sent it to me. So I'm like, oh, I'll just add to Allison's list. Well, she had had some titles that I was going to. Right. We always do. So I. Don't remember which ones were yours. No, I don't ones. care. I know I have enough. Go ahead, please. It's fine. Um, <clears throat> um, this woman and her mother are super close, and her mother dies right before they had a trip planned to uh, Positano, Italy. Um, it's the magical town where her mother has spent the summer before she met uh, Kate. That Katie. That's the. The, the character's name um, mm -hmm. before before meeting Katie's father. So um, Katie doesn't know where to go on the trip, but she does. She, she goes on the trip and while there, she meets her mother, 
the younger version of herself, like before she met her father, before she had kids and getting to know this woman who's different than her mother was, mm -hmm. because of, of course she, she's going to be different with you when it's your mom. Um, but she spends the summer getting to know her mom um, as she was before. So I just thought that yeah. was really interesting. I added that one to my list because I was like, well, I just need to know how does that work? Like, I just, I need to get to the end. How did she meet her own mother? I need to know the logistics and and find out how this happened. That's why I added it to my, my list. I'm not so much concerned about the logistics. I just think like I know. the relationship has got to be very I think important. it will ultimately be missing the point of the story. <laughs> <laughs> I, I might be one of those ones that when I get my hands on it in person, I'll have to flip to the end and just satisfy my curiosity, which I know is terrible. Um, speaking, there are too many books out there to read them all, right? There are, and so I just got to pick and choose. Yeah. Um, my next book I'll say is that Jennifer Egan has a new book coming out this year called The Candy House. It comes out April fifth. It's been described as a sibling novel to A Visit from the Goon Squad, which was a previous book she has written that won a lot of awards, including the Pulitzer Prize. Um, and so it's a sister novel to that, I guess, but it's a, basically, there's a company that can download or externalize memory. Um, and so as the technology develops, you eventually, you're allowed to, it allows you to access every memory you've ever had and then share those memories in exchange for access to other people's memories, I guess. And um, so it's about, I guess, how that plays out. Um, I'm sure there are many ways that that can go, but they, de they describe it as interlocking narratives, which you know I love, uh, multiple characters whose paths intersect over several decades, also love intellectually dazzling, moving, and um, you know, a testament to, it says, the human longing for real connection, love, family, family privacy, and redemption. So I would say, that if you read A Visit from the Goon Squad, you would definitely want to read this because it's a sibling novel. But if you like the types of things that I like that I just listed off, um, I think that will be a good one. I'm interested in it for sure. I've already have my hold placed. <laughs> well, keeping with the with the 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 you know theme of like um, memories and whatnot, I'm gonna and like parents in the past I'm, I'm gonna, this i should have talked about right after the other one um, <laughs> it's called this time tomorrow by en emma straub it's coming out may 17th um and it says what if you could take a vacation to your past um <clears throat> on the eve of her 40th birthday um alice you know her life is fine it's not terrible it's not you know it's fine it's fine things are fine um except um her her father is ailing um and so like she goes to sleep one night and wakes up in 1996 on her 16th birthday and um you know being back in time that that's not what surprises me a teenager again that's not what surprises her it's more the vitality and robustness of her father mm -hmm. and um and she's got a new perspective now, having been at a yeah. job, having seen him decline. And yeah. um, so she wants um, to maybe change some past events so that they take on new meaning. And um, and what would she change if she could? So it's you know kind of like with that old meeting your mother when she's young. This is like you knew her then, but you took you took it for granted. So yeah time with her father yeah you know, while he's young and vital and yeah, yeah. that sounds really nice um I like emma straub's book I, I don't know if you've read any of them i haven't but i was gonna say emma straub's written some really well loved piece books yeah i, I really like her stuff they're always characters that i find very relatable mm -hmm. um maybe because they're always like around my age when I read them. <laughs> She's yeah. probably around my age, which is why her characters are around my age. Right, so, right. So yeah, I, I just I very much identify with her characters. So yeah, yeah I really like her books. Um, there's no smooth transition into any of the other things I had marked in here. So we'll just go. Here goes nothing. 
Uh, that's the title of the book. So there's my transition. Uh, Here Goes Nothing by Steve Toltz comes out May 3rd. Um, and I'm just going to read you this because Angus is a reformed ne'er-do-well looking forward to the birth of his first child when he's murdered by a man who is in love with his pregnant wife. Having never believed in God, heaven or hell, Angus finds himself in the afterlife, a place that provides more questions than answers. As a worldwide pandemic finally reaches the shores of Australia, where the book is set, the afterlife starts to get very crowded and Angus finds his, a way to reconnect with his wife, Gracie, and maybe even seek revenge on his murderer. That sounds like it could go a lot of different ways. I've actually read the, this is a book that I got another advanced e-copy of. And so I've been uh, reading it. It's actually extremely funny. It, like that description, you don't, that could be very serious. It's not. Um, he wakes up in the afterlife and he has no clothes and he's just kind of wandering down this road and someone picks him up and they're like, someone should have come to get you. Like, they're like, Matt, like we're really over understaffed right now. We're really overwhelmed. He takes him to uh, this center. He's supposed to have an orientation, but the orientation is booked and he goes to get something to eat. And they're like, well, you can't get anything to eat without money. And he's like, what? And how do I get money? And they're like, well, how do you think? And he has to get a job. And he's like, I'm in the afterlife and I have to work. And so that's like the, the, as far as I've gotten is kind of that initial premise. Um, I don't want to then. I'm, like, <laughs> I'm done. That's what the, he's I'm like, what is it? And so um, it's, but it's very humorously written and very uh, playfully written. So that description sounds like it could be, and I don't, I don't know how, what, how it'll eventually play out, but so far I've been like chuckling while reading it. And then it kind of goes back to before he died, the, um, man who they've invited to live with them who ends up killing him you know that from the beginning to kind of see how that that plays out too and that's also very funny so i'm i'm into this I it was hilarious i know well i mean <laughs> yeah it's, it takes a certain type of hand to make those types of things funny and this has been so i would say um yeah a tongue-in-cheek type of thing <laughs> um I'm not gonna, there's a very long description of the book in the, uh, uh, mm -hmm. that yeah. the library made. There's a list of all these books. You can find them. So you don't have to remember titles. You can put holds mm -hmm. on them. Um, but I'm looking forward to The Summer Place by Jennifer Weiner. It comes out May 10th. And Jennifer Weiner, I, I always enjoy her books. Um, this one is an unputdownable novel of family secrets and ties that bind. Um, <laughs> I love it. I'm always there for family secrets. Right? There's a, uh, there's a girl, she, Ruby, um, she, uh, her pandemic boyfriend, she's decided that she's marrying him and the wedding date is only three months away. And there's all this drama about the wedding, of course, mm -hmm. but then all of these, other things like her mother had abandoned her when she was a child. And I think like part of it is the stepmother telling her story. So there's all of this drama. And of course the wedding day arrives and secrets come to light and take on their own life and mm -hmm. their confrontations. And it sounds like it's going to be like no member of the family gets untouched by everything that gets revealed. So it's going to be one of those very high drama stories that mm -hmm. somehow is probably going to have a happy ending. I bet it will. I just bet that it will. Man, I still have so many, still have so many books to talk about. Um, Mary says that I'm reading the way she watches movies, i.e. about pandemics. I think actually just a lot of people have written about pandemics since 2020. And if I'm reading new books, like there's a really fair chance that they include something yeah. about pandemics in them. But yes, I do. I, ha I am into this kind of the speculative type of thing. But since you mentioned weddings, I'm going to take a total shift uh have you seen about the book called the wedding season it comes out may 3rd um the premise is that the main character is getting married and her wedding is the first of eight in her calendar year that she has to attend it's she gets married first and then she has seven more weddings to go to or she's in the bridal party or whatever um and so she's very excited to have this whole summer of weddings wedding season um but her fiance calls things off right before they walk down the aisle so She's humiliated and heartbroken and her wedding didn't happen, but now she still has to go to seven more weddings this summer. And so her friends have an idea and they devise a series of outrageous challenges for her to complete at each event, trying to distract her from her breakup. And um, so it, it falls under the, I believe it falls under the romance heading, I'm pretty sure, based on the cover and the vibe. Um, so I imagine that throughout this wedding season, she finds love uh, and a new beginning. 
but I really liked the idea. We've all had those years where it just feels like you have a ton of weddings to go to and imagining that. And then it's a book. So I'm sure that it's all ratcheted up and they're very intense weddings, but that yours gets called off and yours was supposed to be the first one. It just sounds entertaining to me. <laughs> um, sticking to the wedding theme um, on April 5th, uh, Mia Sosa has a book coming out called The Wedding Crasher. Mm -hmm. um, this is a hilarious rom-com about two people who get trapped into a lie of a fake relationship. Uh, fake um, relationships. You always love fake relationships. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, that's just, like, perfect. But it's there's um, Solange, I guess is her name. She's roped into helping her, her cousin, who's a wedding planner, and she, she's at this... Very obviously, these two people are not right for each other mm -hmm. so she crashes the wedding and um and somehow um she claims that he's in love with the woman who crashed the wedding so then like they have to have like this fake relationship to get him out of making the worst mistake of his life like he oh i think gosh. where he realizes it and yeah, so it sounds like um, it's very convenient that she comes along when she yes, yes. But now they're stuck, and um, who knows? Maybe they could fall in love themselves, right? Right. Well, I have a few other romances. This one might. It's called As Seen on TV, and it comes out in June, June seventh, by Meredith Shore. The little tagline in this says, fans of the Hallmark Channel and Gilmore Girls will adore this delightful rom-com about a city girl who goes in search of small town happiness only to discover life and love are nothing like TV movies. So, but you know what? When I read the description, it actually sounds a lot like a TV movie because uh, she does um, follow her heart and she does meet Finn Adams, who's more more mouth-watering than the homemade cherry pie that she can't <laughs> seem to find because she goes to this small town wanting a, like a harvest festival and quaint, uh, charming bakery bakeries. And that's not how this place is that she goes to, but she does find Finn Adams. So I think it all works out. Okay. And Mary said, going back a couple, um, she said, somehow I heard, um, pandemic boyfriend i don't know if that's what you said but i'm not but now i'm wondering if that's similar to people's pandemic pets yes i did say pandemic boyfriend <laughs> um and i think that that's part of like why everyone's like what the what you're getting married in three months because they haven't had a chance to meet him they don't mm -hmm. and i think a pandemic relationship might be never mind i'm gonna shut up i kind of have a pandemic never mind okay <laughs> <laughs> You lead the way into the some next thing here. I'm sure are very wonderful. So, and some of them are probably like, oh my God, now I have a pet with anxiety. What am I going to do? You know? Right. <laughs> right. And Carrie says, for fans of Gilmore Girls. So, exactly. The, I, I will tell you, the as seen on TV, this says it's like a Hallmark movie. I'm probably going to love it. Exactly. It got me for with both. That's, it works for me. <laughs> Um, Weather Girl by Rachel Lynn Solomon came out earlier this month, January 11th. Um, you read, um, the X talk by her. I did. Last year. I and, did. And I remember that you didn't exactly like it. I, it wasn't terrible. It was well, like I, I liked the writing and mm -hmm. I liked the, like, I, so I like, I feel like I liked her. Mm -hmm. Um, and I liked that one. Okay. I think this one that you were talking about is the one that I made fun of to you. Oh, is that the one where they try to get their bosses back together? The X talk, didn't they? Wasn't no, they host a talk show. Oh, they yeah, they the their boss's relationship problem. Yeah, I thought that was so silly. That was the one I made fun of. Well, the X talk was fine. Like, but... Your boss ain't happy. No one. Else <laughs> right. Oh, there's some, there's 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 something there too. You know, are you, I think Carrie's laughing at me. Um, but anyway, yes. So the TV meteorologist and the TV sportscaster. Um, it's like the parent trap, but also they're trying, they're falling in love. They're not siblings and they're adults and <laughs> they work at a TV news station. It was all very bizarre. <laughs> I, I've seen this play out in a Hallmark romance. This, you know, people trying to get their bosses back together. Like, 
I think, okay. it, could, right. I think, it, could, I think it could work. All right. <laughs> so. I'll take your word for it. <laughs> Well, I will say that the audio of the X talk, I listened to it and I, like, I, like I said, I liked our writing. I, it was, it just, the, there were points that ended up feeling a little contrived. ultimately contrived, um, but not as contrived as that, which I think, I think I was like, okay, well, it could be worse. but um, the audio was really good. Um, and so if they have the same um, company or what production people Probably. doing it or whatever, um, because the X talk was about radio show hosts. And so they were really good at just capturing people's different types of voices. And so even when like they would be speaking on the radio was different, they used a different voice and different modulation and stuff. than when they were speaking in real life, they had like an NPR voice. And then they moved on. <laughs> so I don't know. I just feel like they did a good job on that. They probably will on this too. And I like I like when they put that kind of attention to detail. Mm -hmm. in a yeah, I was never sorry. I listened to it. Um, but you'll have to tell me how that one is. <laughs> Let's okay. see. What, where do I want to move on to? Um, well, this one I did not put in romance, even though it probably belongs there. But that's because it was a little bit almost like speculative or science fictiony. It's called The Ark by Tori Henwood Hohen comes out uh, February 8th, and the ARC is a highly secretive, super sophisticated matchmaking service that uses a complex series of emotional, psychological, and physiological assessments to architect partnerships that will go the distance. And so basically it will find your ideal mate. And so um, they, two people are paired together via the ARC, um, and they feel like this is it, they're in their 40s, and they're like, this is it, this is what we've always wanted, I feel happy and good. Uh, but then as their relationship unfolds in unanticipated ways, the two began to realize that true love is never a sure thing. And the arc of a relationship is never predictable, even when it's fully optimized. So I don't know that it is romance, romance. I don't know that there will be a happy ending, but it definitely, I feel like if you're a fan of romance, you may like seeing how, how this plays out. <laughs> that, that's very interesting. That sounds, yeah, cool. I would definitely read that. Yes. Yeah. That's <laughs> good. Um, there is one coming out in May. This is the only young adult book I put on the list. And Casey McQuiston has another book coming out. This one's YA. And okay. Lainey, who, what is it? The Lainey Rose, something like that. She's the book talker that I follow on TikTok. Okay. And, um, she's like my favorite book talker. I follow a couple of different ones. She works in a bookstore. And she's like, oh, I just read this book. You're going to love it. And I'm just like, oh, she's got another one. I'm like, how did I not know? I'm like, let me, let me put it on hold right now. Yeah. It doesn't come out until May 3rd. Mm. She, of course, had an advanced reading copy. And I'm so jealous because I love Casey McQuiston books. So yeah. I'm so bummed that someone out there has read the book that I want to read. Right. Yeah. You have to wait that long. <laughs> maybe I need an account on... Maybe make an account on NetGalley like I do and request yeah. it just for this. I'll look and see if it's there. I can't give it to you. You have to have your own thing, but I can at least yeah. tell you if it's there. I will. I'm going to have to. I'm going to have to look into that because there are some times that I just don't want to wait. Right. Um, of course, then I'll be waiting even longer for her next. Never mind. Um, <laughs> but it's called I Kiss Sarah Wheeler. And um, like, I don't even care what it's about. I honestly do not care what it's about. I yeah. love Casey McQuiston's books. Like they are yeah. just magic to me. I love That's her. That's awesome. Writing. I love her writing. And like the stories she's written have been so different. Mm -hmm. um, so you don't even know, like you don't know what you'll get, like which is exciting because she writes so many different types of things. Yeah. So oh, it's a love story. It's a love story mm -hmm. um, because they're all love stories in some ways. But this one's more um, YA focused. Yeah. So, Yes. Well, I have a book that's not YA, but it is by a YA author, so people may recognize her. This is out of the norm for me, but horror used to be out of the norm for me too. But here we are. I have I haven't talked about any of them, but I have read much more horror than I ever did before. Um, it's called Book of Night by Holly Black. Holly Black is a YA author best known for her series Folk of the Air, I guess. I wrote that down in case anybody knows that. Um, but in this particular book written for adults, I believe, um, shadow, I thought you might like this one, Leah, actually. Shadows can be altered for entertainment and cosmetic preferences, but also to increase power and influence. You can alter someone's feelings and memories, but manipulating shadows has a cost with the potential to take hours or days from your life. Your shadow holds all the parts of you that you want to keep hidden. 
and sometimes it has a life of its own. So there's an underground world of shadow trading and the main character, um, a girl named Charlie, her present life is thrown into chaos um, and so determined to survive, she throws herself into a maelstrom of secrets and murder, doppelgangers, mercurial billionaires, shadow thieves, all desperate to control the magic of the shadows. And it just sounded, um, it says, Holly Black is a master of shadow and story stitching. Remember while you read, light isn't playing a trick, light isn't playing tricks in the book of night, the people are. I don't know, it's not a, fa it was like a fantasy, like maybe like an that urban sounds, fantasy. I would definitely read. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds good. Not intriguing to me too, for whatever reason, even though it's kind of out of my norm, but yeah. This, I, I, I I saw that you added a couple um, nonfiction books to the yes. list. Yes. I, I really only added one, and it's already out. And mm -hmm. I haven't read it yet, but I love the title of it. Um, and I might not even have to read the book. I think the title is probably all I need. We've had this conversation <laughs> before. Um, I didn't do this thing today, Letting Go of Productivity Guilt. I have that book at home. I have it here in my house right now. <laughs> you didn't do the thing. You didn't read it. Um, no, I didn't. <laughs> but I, I, I think a lot of us have that problem. Like, we feel like if we're not being productive, like, we're, we just, we, we base our self-worth on how productive we are and how much we get done. And because, like, that's what society has done to us. But we, that's not right. So we need to let go of that. And, um, I need to read the book, but again, I feel like the title just gives me permission to sit back and drink my coffee if that's what I want to do. Right. And take those 10 minutes, and I'm, I'm one of those people I'm really bad about taking my break. Oh, really? Yeah. So I think this is like, Leah, take your break. Yeah. Oh, good. So, yeah. Yeah. See, I when I read it, the, or when I saw it, like I was joking, I probably need a little productivity guilt in my life, um, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, I never have trouble taking breaks. Um, my my morning break is playing Wordle. Um, I have not ventured into Wordle yet, so mm. anyway. Yeah, uh, so I'm one of those. But um, yeah, so but I but I was I was interested in it, and the way that the title was phrased, I was also showing it to one of my coworkers, and I was like. Oh look, it's me, and there's this project that I like had kept putting off, and I was like, it's another day where I have not done that thing that I said I would do by working on this project. I didn't do the thing today, and that's why I was thinking I probably don't need to be eased out of my productivity guilt. I probably need to be injected with a little bit of productivity guilt. See, I always get I'm like, I did the thing, I did it, I did it, I got it done. Yeah, I get very excited when I do the thing. <sighs> And it's always like easier than you think it's going to be, is what always happens to me, too. I'm like, well, I should have done this a long time ago because this really wasn't that bad. Right, yeah. But, um, so, but yeah, yeah well, we're probably not. I love that it gives me permission not to feel guilty when I don't get something done. <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, one of my other, one of my nonfictions was, is called Meet Me by the Fountain, an inside history of the mall uh, by Alexandra Lange. It comes out June 14th. Well, quite a ways away, but I'm very excited about this one. Um, and it's just, it, it's about the, the rise and seemingly fall of the American Mall Shopping Center. Um, and so I'm very eager to read this because I have a lot, like many of us do, most of us probably, a lot of core memories of the mall, different malls. It didn't um, have the fountain, did it? Yes, it did. Or did? It did? Mm -hmm. I, yeah. It, it, the fountain was gone by the time I got here, I think. I don't know. Yeah, there's, the there's like these diamond to, they meet in the corner and they have these fountains um but when we when i was little i used to go to city center a lot too my mom and i used to go there um and so i just whenever those on those facebook pages and instagram and stuff they post pictures of old city center i'm just like it, it sucks me in. i'm enraptured um so i'm really excited to read this book oh yeah i the fountain was always the meeting place at the mall and it was like which fountain because like the mall had a couple different sure. fountains, yeah so yeah yeah, the, at our mall, I think it was, um, yes, I would I would meet people at the fountain, but also just given the setup of our mall, um, the, I don't know, the food court was also an easy place to meet. We didn't um, have a food court in our mall, which was okay. weird, but there were food places, like, all throughout. Throughout, so yeah. Really yeah, and then it was a good excuse to get a cinnamon roll or a pretzel. <laughs> so. <laughs> yes, yeah. 
Um, anyway, okay. Oh, oh my God, I love those pretzels. I know. I know. The, I know. They're unbeatable. They're unmatchable. There's nothing to replace them. No. And yeah. Now I want a pretzel. Thanks. You're welcome. <laughs> You're welcome. I know. I know. It doesn't take much for me to have a craving for something. So I get it. Mary says that she just started trying out Wordle. Mostly she gets all words and gives up and tries Google. And is that cheating? Um, yes. I think that's cheating. <laughs> I think it is. Yes. Um, but you know, whatever gets you through. And uh, I think as long as you did it. Hills. Oh my God. Do you remember Hills? Hills was the best. They had, you could get the warm nuts, oh, the little counter. In the <laughs> yeah, I loved Hills. Oh, can I talk about one more book? Yeah. I forgot to put it on my list. So like everyone needs to know that this book is coming out. Normally I would not hype the James Patterson book. He doesn't need my help. Does not need my help. Um, but Run Rose Run mm -hmm. is coming out March 7th. And he wrote it with Dolly Patterson and like Dolly Parton. Dolly Parton. I said his name again. I don't, sorry. He wrote it with Dolly Parton and she has made a CD of music that goes along with the book. So like how awesome would it be to check out the CD and listen to the music while you're reading the book? Like right. Dolly Parton. So right. I remember when I saw that, I was thinking, so she tried out her hand, you know, like she's, She's writing a novel with James Patterson. Is James Patterson going to try his hand at singing along with Dolly Parton? I doubt it, but how interesting would that be? <laughs> you know, he's the kind of guy that I think would go ahead and give it a try. He doesn't seem to be, like, embarrassed by much. No, like, and he just, like, he does everything. So yeah, yeah. why not that? Yeah, they're all James Patterson. <laughs> um, all well, they're well, secretly James Patterson. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I'm just picturing like all these famous authors, like just like pulling off like a Scooby Doo style mask, and it's James Patterson underneath. Yes, yeah, it's all. Um, so I'll I'll bring up one more then that I wanted to. I mean, I we have the list. We're putting it. It's online, so you can read it. And uh, maybe the library would put Run Rose Run, since we mentioned that, but it's not on the list. Yeah. So there's plenty to choose from on there. More than we talked about today. But the last one I'll pick is called um, Patricia Wants to Cuddle. The author is Samantha Allen. It doesn't come out until June, but this was an advanced copy that I read and it's just so different that I wanted to bring it up. Um, it is a like bachelor inspired book and I always tend to pick those up and read them when there are these reality dating competitions because it just, there's always a different spin on it. Sometimes they're boring, but I just always kind of get, it just entertains me to see what someone's gonna do with it. This is never, I've never read one quite like this before. Uh, when the final four women uh, in competition for an aloof, if somewhat sleazy, bachelor's heart arrive on a mysterious island in the Pacific Northwest, um, they settle in. This is their travel date. Things are, you know, get nearing the end of the competition. Uh, but then people start disappearing due to a Bigfoot-esque creature who lives in that wilderness. <laughs> Bigfoot-esque creature is named Patricia. And um, there's a little bit more to that than meets the hot eye, which I will not reveal, but she comes through and people people disappear uh, and they're trying to track down what's happening to them. And you're also trying to figure out what's the deal with Bigfootess Patricia. So I can't really say more than that. It is what it is and it was entertaining. <laughs> um, that that sounds interesting. Yes, I'm gonna have to check that one. <laughs> yeah, it, I think you'd like it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so, so we've kept people long enough, I think. Is that, you know what? I'm I'm looking at the clock on my computer, which is wrong, wrong, wrong. Comically wrong. Um, yeah. <laughs> it says it's 10.01 p.m. on January 18th. So, yeah. My, my time is computer ready. needs an update. <laughs> it does. But no, we've been about at it for about an hour. Okay, yeah. so we've probably kept you long enough. Um, we're love to hear what you're you're looking forward to reading this year so let us know in the comments and yeah, yeah we'll see you later yeah we'll see you next time we'll be back april we, can't 4th. we can say when we'll be back april 4th we'll see you then yeah <laughs> bye guys bye, -bye.